Hey y'all, welcome to a new vlog. I'm currently putting a grocery order to him, mate. Putting it up. What up? CJ says, hey, where you at, boy? Hmm. Yeah, you put those in the fridge for me. Anyway, a sickness has went through our house, so... Anyway, y'all. Trying to just take out what needs to be taken out. Refrigerate what needs to be refrigerated. Oh, honey. And then I actually have to go pick up a Sam's order. So, but anyway, sickness just went through our house. CJ it started with him having a cough. Then I went from CJ to baby boy. I was up with baby boy last night. And then it went from baby boy to Carson. And Carson has a fever. So it's escalated. <laughs> um, but he says he's feeling okay. So we're just going to try to keep him hydrated and then oh. go from there. So. You said Carson. Yep. So anyway, love you guys. Is there cheesecake left? Uh-uh. And we'll see you in a little bit. Just pulled up in the house. Let me get my phone. Be listening to podcasts and stuff while I'm when I be going to do stuff. Listen to music, podcasts. And y'all, sorry if I sound a little off. I something's going on. Um. Oh, yeah, something's going on. Oh, sorry, y'all. I'm trying to get this stuff. Get out of this car with one hand. And then I'm also trying to figure out if I can change the settings. See, it's real bright. If I can change the settings as I go. Or if it's something that has to... Yep, hold on. Interesting, so I can. Cool. And I like it better in manual because I can manipulate what I need to manipulate. But let me get in the house. Talk to you in a second. Say hey, boys. Hi. What's that? From mommy. They're watching TV on our new TV. Arby's. What? May I ask mom for something? You can ask mom for it, yeah. You feel okay, Bubba? Hmm? Huh? Hi. You feel okay, baby? Yeah. Okay. Hey, guys. Uh, oh, I just realized I didn't put a moisturizer on my face. Let me go do that first. So I don't know what all Cody has told y'all yet. Um, I'm sure he's filled y'all in, but if he hasn't, our baby boys, um, all three of them have a cough. Um, there was definitely a cold that ran through our homeschool program this week and last week. And so I guess it's going to be hitting our household. Um, and thankfully, the symptoms are very manageable. Nobody has a fever. Nobody has. Um, Carson is a little warm, but it's not enough for us to even give him any medicine for it. Um, nobody. Um, nobody is like out of character. Because Carson is a little warm, he's a little bit more... I think his body is fighting it, and so he's just a little bit more tired, but he's still himself, still playful, um, just kind of chilling around. Kylan is still himself playing, laughing. He has a cough. His cough actually feels the worst out of all of them, and that's just because he's such a small baby, and he can't really spit up any type of mucus. It's mucus. It started off really dry. All of them had a little dry cough. Um... And then from there, it turned into mucusy, a little mucusy. Um, but still not enough for me to be like, well, I mean, of course, I don't like my kids being sick. And of course, I've had thoughts of like, you know, is it something more serious? But they're fine. Let me adjust y'all. I thank God. Yes, my kids are not well as far as like 100% well. 
but it's it's far better than what it could be um so i'm thankful for that um because we've been nursing our babies our kitchen looks a hot mess because we have not been we've been back there making sure they're good and we were up all night with the baby, not because he was up, but because he had to be elevated a certain way and he was coughing during his, during his sleep. So that kind of stopped us from being able to fully get the rest that we needed. I think Cody got like an hour, maybe two hours. I got maybe four hours. So we were, and it was all broken up. So it was just not a pleasant evening. But um, this morning, Cody, when we finally got up, we were up for a little while, then Cody went to sleep for about four hours. And then he got up. Well, I woke him up. I was like, babe, I got to go to sleep. Like, I have to. So he got up. He got the baby. And then I went to sleep for about maybe two hours. So anyway, so I'm going to take y'all along with me as I straighten up and cook dinner. And yes. And I'll see y'all in a little bit. <laughs> going to be dairy based and because we're fighting mucus i'm not making that so i'll make that later this week once everybody is well and can handle the dairy so i'm um, getting ready to make dinner so i'm making salmon spinach and um rice i am also going to make a homemade tea that has lemon orange chamomile but i'm also going to juice a juice to keep Carson and Cody hydrated. It's gonna have orange, lime, mint, ginger, and what else did I say I was gonna put in it? Yeah, orange, lime, mint, lemon, and ginger. Um, not lime. I think I'm just gonna do the. Well, lime um, lime helps with inflammation though, and there's inflammation there. Anyway, yeah, I'm about to make that drink for them as well. And um, I got Carson just keeping fluids in him because um, he's the one that's really starting to really feel warm. Um, he's starting to not be himself. So I'm trying to let it fight before I give him any, like, Tylenol or anything. Um, but that's what I'm about to do. So I got to cook dinner, make the juice, make the tea. Um, I'll probably make the tea last because I'll have them drink that before bed because it's going to have chamomile in it. And I got real chamomile, like the actual flower or whatever. I think it's the flower, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, I have that. I got that from the apothecary. Y'all know um, we get a lot of products from... Um, Actually, I posted her channel in here. Um, Organic Sister. She is, her name is Dr. Harris, and she is, um, she owns an apothecary here. 
um, super smart lady. Um, I love her to pieces. She has helped my family so much when it comes to stuff with our health and all that good stuff. Say hi. Hello. So, um, anyway, I went to the apothecary the other day and got some homemade cough syrup that she made along with elderberry. This is her homemade cough syrup. This is the elderberry juice that we take. So I've been having the boys on that. I also bought some orange juice too. I'm just trying to keep Carson and Cody hydrated. So um, they're still themselves, still running around playing. But Carson is just, he's really starting to look a little lethargic. But you know at night they kind of get worse. So I'm about to cook because it's late. Like I'm way behind schedule on cooking. But I'm about to cook dinner and then go from there. So... just pan sear it. I rarely just bake it because I like the extra crisp to the salmon. Um, but you run the risk when you cut salmon up for it to break apart. Uh, sorry. Uh, sending a text message. But um, you run the risk of breaking the salmon breaking up when you cut it like that. So I knew it was going to kind of break up like that anyway. But no big deal. It's still edible and it tastes delicious. We've got our spinach. Well, we got the salmon here. I put all the salmon right here. Spinach. And then the rice over there. I'll give y'all a better view in a second. I'm just trying to wrap up everything. I'm trying to clean as I go. I'm trying to do better by cleaning as I go. Because I'll just let stuff towel up. And then after I'm done cooking, I'm completely overwhelmed. So, trying to do better about that. And wiping off my stove too as I cook. Because... 
yeah, it could be a lot. So, and I cleaned my stove before I started cooking, so. But let me show y'all. There's the spinach. It's got onions, garlic, and some seasoning, rice. And then, of course, the salmon is right here. So, that's what we're going to do. About to eat dinner. And then I'm going to then make the tea and the juice. So, still got a good bit to do, but at least we can eat. So, there's that. Okay, y'all. So, what are we about to do, Poo Poo? We're about to make the special juice. About to make the special juice. I got him masked up so if he's not around his baby brother coughing and stuff. Um, yeah, I have a double cough. Yeah, so we're about to make the special juice. What's, wait, what's, what's, with our juicer. Mom, mom, Step uh, down, Poo Poo. Uh, mama. Mm hmm. Um, you what? I'm going to go get them, and you're going to wait here and be my sous chef, okay? <laughs> All right, y'all. All right, let's put this over here. And let us go get what we need. First, I have to assemble the juicer, so uh, that usually helps with this. With you? Uh, no, because some of these parts are dangerous to touch. So I'm going to try to remember... Normally, Cody reminds me. Okay. Yeah, that locks in like that. So. Oh. See? Oh, good. Oh, glory to God. Uh, yeah, I don't know that one. You don't know that word? Glory to God? Yeah. It won't. So I think I have to put that on. That's this is how we do that. Babe, am I doing this right? <laughs> yes, that goes there to collect the pulp. All right, y'all. So, can I get it on? We have the juicer. Y'all can see the juicer set up right here. Mama. Huh? So, I'm going to go get the supplies. I'm not going to hold y'all while we take all time. Mama, can I turn it on? It's not ready, baby. We got to get the stuff first. Okay. sooner but Cody and I end up having a very needful conversation concerning schedules and boundaries and all that good stuff so if I could get this up there for a second but um hold on let me hold on y'all okay so around 11 15 11 30 I made a decision that I wanted to um Get some me time because I literally haven't been out the house since Friday. I've literally been in the house and it's Monday. And I was like, last night I knew I was snapping on the kids and just frustrated. And I was like, okay, I need some time tomorrow. The original plan was for me to come get my nails um, and my toes done. But I forget that my nail shop is closed on Fridays. So originally... I was going to go do that and then I was this morning I was just talking to God and I was like Lord I really want to do better about my mornings I know that I don't want to like be calculated to be like okay schedule out this this is the time I spend with God no I feel like I should be spending time with him all the time and he doesn't have to be on a schedule like if at three o'clock randomly three o'clock in the afternoon I want to go and pray to God it doesn't have to be during that set like a scheduled time and so I've been struggling with setting times in the morning because it became ritualistic versus relational. And, um, but I also have also just because of that, I've completely strayed away from it. 
excuse me, and just getting up and just grabbing my phone, checking emails, which that was the one thing I was totally against. And so I just realized I did not grab myself anything to drink. So I had gotten to a point where um, I was just, like I said, it was throwing my days off because I was just getting up and doing stuff and then be like, oh Lord, I haven't even prayed. And so it just so happened, I was having a conversation with God about it this morning and literally I got led to um, Jackie Hill Perry's page some kind of way, which I love her. I don't consume her content a lot, but the stuff that I do see, I like. And I um, I feel aligned with and I can relate to. So I um, I ended up what did I do? Oh, I saw, I was watching something and it let me, and I was like, oh, let me go to their podcast page because I haven't looked at it in a while. And I stumbled upon um, an episode about distractions upon waking, not realizing that she had just written a devotional called Upon Waking, Awaking, Upon Waking. Um, and so I was like, yeah, I need to get that like today. So I text Cody because he was up front and um, I was like, babe, do you mind if I go and just have some time to myself and get this purchase this book? So that's what I'm going to do. The other thing, and Cody Jr. doesn't know this, but so he technically, he lost his tablet. Um, he lost his tablet, um, not physically lost it, but like lost his privileges because we've been working with him on making better choices, following instructions a little bit better. He's a good kid, but you know, kids have their things and we've been getting on to him about, uh, just going and doing without asking. And so he's lost it and, um, he doesn't get it back for another two weeks. And so I believe that children should, you know, receive consequences for negative behavior. However, I don't feel like they have to be punished the whole time. Um, like they got the punishment. It is what it is. You don't have to keep punishing them while they're on punishment or, grounded or whatever like the ground being grounded enough is enough and so um long story short cody jr woke up this morning and decided that he wanted to i know he's bored out of his mind he hates missing school but we're trying to get these kids recovered from the sickness and um he does not like um to just sit idle he has to be doing something so he asked if he could take one of his white undershirts um, and paint on it. And at first in my head, the, the mom and the neat, like not wanting paint in my house, cause I'm not a neat freak, but I was about to say neat freak, but the one in my house clean, I was like, yeah, no. But then I thought about, I was like, Tam, like he let him live a little, like let him paint. So he was like, well, I was thinking, I was like, well, you have to do it on the kitchen table and do it with something underneath. And then he made a good point. Hold on y'all. Everybody's calling me. Hello. I don't know why for some reason I can't get this point out. Literally. Cody just called me to tell me something. So, anyway, I guess God wanted me to finish my lunch before I, because he, he knew I was going to try to drive and eat. But, um, so yeah, I, um, decided to let him do it. But he accidentally messed up, spilled a big glob of black paint on the shirt and was upset and of course, when he got another one without asking, knew he wasn't supposed to and was trying to Alan King, no. I got onto him, but Holy Spirit said, just, just go get him some stuff. Get him some arts and craft. And let and harness that talent in him because he's a very talented artist. Like this baby can draw. Um, he has an eye for it. And he gets it from his grandmother, honestly. Like his grandmother can draw really well. So um, my mother-in-law, um, she's just really good, so, um, and my brother actually can draw as well, it's not something he does, but he can draw, he has the, the talent to draw, so, um, anyway, I said that to say, I'm gonna pick him, I'm gonna surprise him, of course, I'm not, I'm gonna get Carson something too, but I'm gonna surprise him, and get him, um, I'm surprised him and get him, uh, some arts and craft things, which he loves it anyway, but like things where he can build things, paint, um, 
I'm going to get him just some different stuff. I know that he'll love to have at home. So, excuse me. That's what I'm headed to do. Um, I'm just going to go where my heart leads me. My plan is not to be gone more than an hour and a half. I don't need to be gone too, too long. I'm going to go pick up this book. Barnes & Noble says they have it. Target does too. But I think I'm going to end up going to Target to get it because it's cheaper at Target. And Fresh Market is nearby and they have macaroons that I love to eat. So I'm going to go get those. So that's what I'm doing. Um, I will see y'all in a little bit. I'm going to take y'all with me. Um, I'm still getting used to having this camera in public. People get so funny when they see you with a camera in public. Um, so I'm, try I'm trying to find a balance of like how to do it. Because I've been used to doing it on my phone. When you have your phone, people don't pay attention at all. But the camera, like, people get freaked out by that. They think you're recording them. I'm like, my camera is on me. I'm not even thinking about you. So, um, the camera just decided to fall down. But, um, yeah, I'm about to listen to some music. Probably uh, message my friend Hope back um, on Marco Polo. And I will see y'all in a little bit. All right, y'all, we have arrived to the Target, and I'm going to try to be in and out up here. As much as I love Target, I only like coming to Target like in the morning. Oh, look at that baby. Like in the morning where it's not a lot going on and or at night when ain't nobody here. I do not come to Target during the day like this, and this is still earlier in the day, so it's not too bad, but like it's going to start picking up in the next hour or so, and I do not want to be around when that is taking place. I'm currently talking to Hope on Marco Polo, like I was telling y'all earlier. <laughs> that I was probably going to be talking to her on the ride here. But, um, yeah. So, let me get inside the store and see what's going on. Okay. either I'm blind or they don't have the book it says it's for in stock for left here but I literally don't see it and I see the section where I would think it would be and I don't see it maybe it's on a different aisle and because I don't see it on the aisle that it says it's on and it could be right in front of my face but I literally don't see it Y'all see it? Mm. Here it is, y'all. It was on the end cap. Well, that's exciting. Um, the book is much cheaper than what it was online, and it's additional 30% off. Look at God. Do it, Jesus. That's what happens when you walk in obedience. Okay, I got what I needed from here, so I'm about to leave, because I literally have no other reason to be in here, so I'm about to go. on my way to the car I'm a little discombobulated because 
Um, I, I'm not even going to say it because it might get taken the wrong way. Um, but anyway, I'm just going to call and share that with Cody because it was hilarious. Um, but anyway, I am walking to the car. I have finished my shopping. I had a Visa gift card in my purse. I didn't know what the balance was, but my total was like $45 and I slid it and it took it down to $25. So that was enough to take some down. So yay me. Um, I am getting ready to go into Fresh Market. I really wonder if I should just walk over there and get some exercise instead of driving my car, parking, and then coming right back. But who am I kidding? Where's my keys? I might have threw it in my main purse. I always put my keys in the same spot, but sometimes if I'm rushing, I'll throw them down in my purse, which I did. I did. Anyway. So I have finished at Target. So first destination is down. Probably would have been done if it, if I didn't take forever to find where the doggone book was. Ooh, I feel like y'all can't see me. Okay. Ooh, I would have been found it if I could have figured out where the doggone book was. Um, it was on the end cap the whole time. Oh, I am hot. Um. So while I was in the store, when I tell you every chance that a customer, not a customer, a person who worked at the store got the chance to speak to me, they spoke to me. I don't know if it was because I had the camera in my hand or if I'm just looking extra cute today, which I am. But like literally, and I know Target usually has pretty decent customer service, but like nobody ever just speaks, like constantly speaking to me, especially like people have were stopped, stopped what they were doing to speak to me. And I was just like, this is strange. Um, I'm not complaining, like I love it, but <clears throat> I just thought it was interesting because that's not something that normally happens. So, excuse me. Um, I don't think sis know what, 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 what um, season to dress for us. She got on, a short dress and sandals but she got on a jacket and a beanie i feel you though sis because that's really what the weather is doing like we don't know whether to dress warm or cold like we don't know what to do it's quite annoying to be completely honest there we go that's how i did it that's how i get it up there um i got that door open i don't want to hit it but okay Let me hit that door. Oh, this car is flying. See, I don't like this parking lot. I do not like Target's parking lot. Well, this particular Target's parking lot. Oh, she getting the baby out of the car. Just a little pumpkin. Oh, Lord. Oh, that baby is so adorable. Oh, he looked like Kylan too. He just a pumpkin. Oh my goodness, look at that baby. Wow. Oh, I'm so grateful for my, it's times like this where I'm grateful for my husband because I just sat here and watched this man sit up at the front of the car, scrolling on his phone while his wife was struggling to get the baby out. And then when she got out, he got out of the car. Didn't even try to help her nothing. See, I'm grateful for my husband. Cause Cody, that ain't, Cody would not have done that. He would have been like, babe, let me get the baby. Let me help. Or if he was on his phone scrolling to do something, he would have said, let me finish this first and then I'll help you. Like he didn't even try to help her. Babe, I tell you sometime, Lord will show you. Be grateful for what you got. Cause Cody would never. Let me brag on my husband a little bit. Mm. Okay, anyway, I'm about to run ahead of Fresh Market. I'm not going to bring y'all in there. Or am I? I'm going to let y'all see. I'm not going to bring y'all in there. Let me see. I may or may not. We'll see.
children really don't need, but it's organic and it doesn't have the gelatin in there, which people don't know. Gelatin is what really causes cavities really bad. And I was trying to see if they have it, but they just have the lollipops and the gummy bears and I didn't want to get those. So I know where I can go get the giggles, but I don't know if I'm going to go there today. I'm going to be on that side of town in a few minutes, but I think I'm going to just stick with my macaroons. Yep. Hello. All right, y'all. I made it out. I made it out. Okay. I'm going to put some hand sanitizer on. And then I'm about to enjoy my macaroons. I'm about to show y'all. They are so good. Did I tell y'all I was coming to get macaroons? I don't know if I told y'all that. I probably did. But I feel like I've been talking. This lighting is terrible. I feel like I've been talking to y'all and Hope at the same time. And so I can't remember if I told y'all or told Hope what it was I was doing. But, oh, excuse me. I'm going to get y'all set up right here because I figured out how I did it before. Okay, I figured it out. Some hand sanitizer. And then I'll show y'all what I got. So, oh. Voila, these are the pistachio macaroons. First time I ever tasted this flavor, I want to say, oh, I'm going to this crush. First time I ever tasted this flavor was, um, I literally, I'm looking at the lady that used to keep CJ when he was a baby. She had an in-home daycare. She used to, we used to go to church together too. She kept my baby. Anyway, the first time I ever tried this particular flavor, I want to say was in Atlanta. It was in a, I think it was in Perimeter Mall in Atlanta. Um, they had like a, um, what's that Atlanta? I think it was Perimeter. I think it was Perimeter Mall. Anyway, they had a um a macaroon stand there, and I think I tried this particular flavor. I want to say. Mm. Oh. Like, who would think a pistachio flavor anything would be good? But mm -hmm. I don't know what they put in there, but it's so good. Just like pistachio ice cream is good too. Anyway, I'm headed to my next destination. I'm getting away from Target before it gets crazy busy. I'm headed to Hobby Lobby, which let's be honest, I really don't need to go in that store. Is she waiting on me? Okay. I really don't need to go in that store. That store is a, it's not good for me. You know, some people are like, oh, I need to go back in Bath and Body Works or I don't need to go to such and such makeup store. Like for me, it's Hobby Lobby. I'm always looking for new ways to make my house feel like my place and so that's my store and Target too but I've learned how to be disciplined in Target Target really haven't been hitting on stuff lately either like not how they used to be anyway I'm headed my next destination and i'll see y'all in a little bit so. all right y'all it's been about an hour and some change since i last talked to y'all i think the last time i talked to y'all i was headed to hobby lobby and i decided not to bring my camera into hobby lobby because first of all y'all have seen me in hobby lobby multiple times and then second of all um i just wanted to go ahead and get in and get out and i have to worry about carrying my purse the camera like all of that and so, the strangest thing happened to me 
while I was in Hobby Lobby. So, I'm going to preface this by saying I watch too many, like, suspense and thriller type shows with my husband. Because, y'all, my brain automatically assumes that everybody is crazy and got a motive. And I be looking like, you know what I'm saying? Um, but... Um, I, you know, I'm t I'm type of person. I'm not in public. Somebody speaks to me, I speak back. I'll hold the whole conversation with you. Um, oop, I'll hold a whole conversation with you or whatever. So, with that being said, that's just my nature. And like naturally, people gravitate to me for some reason. Um, and talk to me. I've been told that I have an RBF, which if you don't know what that is, um, it's basically a face that is intimidating to people <laughs> and so um i said all that to say um with that um i i used to i used to always didn't have a face that was intimidating um i was a big smiley type person as i got older my face just i just be serious i'd be thinking about stuff like but when you approach me my face lights up so anyway I said that to say I was in the store and there was this um, middle-aged man that was just I noticed I kept passing him on certain aisles and I noticed every time out of the my peripheral vision I noticed he was looking at me um, and I'm the type of person like I don't like being stared at I don't like like I can always pick up on certain things so I proceeded to do my own thing like I didn't give eye contact or anything um, and I finally got on an aisle where I was cl in close proximity with him. And as I passed him, you know, I gave, gave him quick eye contact. Because, you know, when you pass people, you kind of look at them and you keep it moving. Should have never did that. That gave him the signal to say. So, he, I literally go off the aisle and he walks up to me. And he's like, Skip, uh, hey, I, I just want to say you're, you're very, very beautiful. And I said, thank you. Oh, thank you so much, you know, thinking that's going to be it. And then he walks away kind of, and then kind of like doubles back. And he's like, I, I didn't mean to be rude by saying that. I just really wanted you to know that you're very, very beautiful. Or he said, I don't want to be ugly by saying that. I just want to let you know that you're very beautiful. And I said, again, I said, oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. I said, you know, don't worry. You know, in my head, I'm thinking, why would I think you're being ugly? But okay. So then he says it again. He doubles back again. So he walks away and then doubles back. And he's like, yeah, you're just really, really beautiful. And in my head, I'm like, okay. Sorry, you've said that three times now. He's like, yeah, yeah. And I said, thank you. Thank you so much. At this point, my smile went from genuine to awkward. Like, okay. So then he doubles back again. And he's like, are you painting something? And I was like, no, I'm not. Like, I have a buggy full of stuff. I've, like I told you, I was getting arts and crafts for CJ. I got, I forgot that they have a Black History Project that's due. And um, their dad is going to help them do that because technically I'm their teacher and I'm the one who assigned it. So that would be uh, biased for me to do the project with them and then turn around and grade it. So there's that. But, um, yeah, so he was like... Um, he was like, yeah, he was like, um, are you painting? And I was like, no. And now in my head, I'm like, okay, he's trying to hold a conversation. And I could tell at that point that he might have been, um, I, because I work with children with disabilities, I could tell that he might have had a, some type of mental disability or a cognitive delay. And, um, but he, you know, was capable of holding a conversation and clearly, um, in his right mind. But social cues, I guess he don't get them. Or just don't care. But um, he was like, yeah, he was like, um, I I used to do those jigsaw puzzles. No, he said, I thought you were um, painting or something. I said, no, I'm not. He said, yeah, yeah, I saw that, at that in your buggy. He pointed at reference to something I had in my buggy. And um, I was like, yeah, no, my son has a project. And at this point, I said a very matter of fact, like, okay. And so, still smiling because I don't want to be rude, but I'm just like, sir, leave me alone. And so, then he goes, yeah, um, I used to do those jigsaw puzzles, but they got a little difficult for me. 
He said, so now I started making jewelry. I said, oh, okay, good for you. As I turn away and I'm like literally looking for a specific thing. And at this point, my heart is racing because everything in me from watching them thrillers is telling me that this is a, this man is a stalker and he's crazy and like red alarms are going off. Like, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I got to get away from him. So then he says, um, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, you, you're not painter or something he said. And finally he said something else and I was like, okay, well good. Yeah. So he walks off and I walk off and I'm like, okay, I got a feeling if he see me again in the store, he gave vibes like he'd be the person that will continue to follow you around the store and find a reason to keep talking to you. So I was like, I got to get up out of this door. Okay. I got to go. So I head to the register because the one thing I was going to go look for, I was like, mm-mm. So I head to the register and I'm like, okay, I got two choices. Either I need to hurry up and get out of here or try to stall because um, I just had a feeling he was going to pop up. So I look up and he's at, I'm like, doggone it. There he go. He had the register, like two registers over from me. And I'm like, okay, I can either stall right here at the counter or I can like, because what I didn't want for it was for him like to follow me out to my car and then follow me home. Like he was just giving them kind of vibes. So I look up, he's talking and I realize he literally talks to everybody. Like he's talking to everybody, which he gave those vibes. Like he just sparked conversation with anybody. But, um, I was like, okay, Lord, just let him. So I was like, you know what, Tamara, God ain't give you the spirit of fear if he try you, you know how to put him down on his back. So <laughs> let's just keep going. So I'm walking and sure enough, he's running his mouth to the other ladies. And then he comes, um, he sees me and he's about to walk in front of me. And I'm like, oh, you can go ahead. And he says, okay. Oh, I just talked to you. Yeah, I just talked to you. I said, yeah. He said, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, and he started saying something and I said, okay. And like pushed the buggy in and I guess he got the hint and then he walked out. So I stood in like the opening. Y'all know if you walk in Hobby Lobby, they have all the furniture and stuff at the front. Well, at least that's our Hobby Lobby is. And I walked in and I just was stand, standing right there. And I watched him walk out and I looked up and he was in the parking lot. Just walking, walking, walking. And I was like, Lord, please let him. And then he I saw him get into a car. I just stood there like I was taking a picture of furniture. And then he got in his car and he was the passenger. So I didn't see them pull off, but... That was enough for me. He got in the car with somebody else. So I got in my car and I got on. And I called Cody. I was like, babe, the strangest thing happened. Now, there are some other details that I left out that I did share with Cody. But that was the gist of it. So anyway, I'm home. I'm about to go in the house. I'm actually about to record a reel because I had a funny reel idea. And then I'm about to go in the house. So So I got surprise for y'all. Supplies. I got a few surprises for y'all. You said, you said, you said surprise, right? Yes, I have a surprise. Are they going to be toys? Not toys. Uh, not necessarily. But. Is there going to be a toy? Huh? Is there going to be a toy? Uh oh. Baby coffin. Hold on, y'all. I'm going to let y'all see me because I was getting ready to do a surprise by hear my baby coughing and Cody's in, outside. So, hold on. Okay. So, I just gave Cody Jr. and Carson their shirts and their paint. So, are y'all excited about that? Yes. Carson, I think. Carson. Wait, what kind of ice cream? Hey! Oh, Leave no. his stuff alone. Let him do his own thing. Okay. Um, and then Cody Jr. has pipe cleaners because him and his friends like to make stick figures out of the pipe cleaners. So, Carson got this where he can build some stuff and ice some cool cream. stuff. Do you see how they did? Yeah, look. You see how they did that? Make different stuff in there. Okay, so. Look, I did get the book. Cream. Y'all saw me get the book from Target, so. I'm about to take their project Look. stuff to Wait, their dad. So he can keep track of it. So, I've got their Mom, stuff. I'm taking this over here to their daddy. You broke it! Papas! Yeah. I hear you, Papas! What are you doing back here? What are you doing? You say hi? Hi, baby. Oh, that diaper stinks. Hi, Noonies. Hi, Nuka Steenies. 
Hi, Bubba the Wubba. I know it. That's a little call. Hi, stinky fat fat. Hi, my dinky dinky ninky. Hi, my dinky dinky ninky. Hey to the peoples. <laughs> I just woke up fussing. Oh, you said hey. Kai, why you why you why you doing that, boy? Oh. Yeah. Okay, lay your head back down, Bubba's. Come on. There you go. Anyway, like I said, y'all ain't. See much of me today, but I just wanted to say hi because it looks like the camera's about to die. It rhymed. Anyway, so we'll see y'all later. Okay, y'all, so here's an update. Um, you got it, babe? So, um, baby boy's cough got worse and he has a low grade temp. Um, we called the doctor's office this morning and they called back after getting the update and told us to bring him in because I do hear some crackling in his chest. So we're headed to the doctor now. Uh, Y'all good? To take baby boy. Um, went in to work today, but we only had three students. Um, whatever this is that got passed around at the school is just got our babies down so um we are headed there um we're all masked up um because typically if we have a sick visit um no matter what it is they want us to have on masks just to protect the staff which is understandable um and so we're headed there um and as y'all can see, the baby still has a cough. So this Carson, CJ's cough is pretty much lingered away. It's still, it's a little, like a little lingering cough, but it's not nearly as bad as the baby's. Carson's is still a dry cough. So um, I think Carson had a cold on top of allergies because his cough started off dry, then it got mucusy, and then now it's still just kind of dry baby has a mucusy cough so i don't know what's going on but we're just praying and believing god that it's nothing major that it's something that baby boy will be able to get through and well not will be he will get through it in jesus name but just praying that it's nothing um serious um we know that god has him covered we know that um it's nothing serious we already know that so Oh, it's been a long day. We are exhausted. We were up all night with the baby. So, um, and not so much that he was awake, but he was waking up coughing. But he was frustrated because he was trying to go back to sleep. But the cough was just keeping him awake. So, he slept a lot today, which I know his body is fighting off whatever this is. And I dozed off earlier watching a movie with the boys and just trying to still spend time with them because you know they've been stuck at home too so anyway headed to the doctor babe did you want to say anything let me see hey y'all um has been a long day i'm not gonna rehash everything tim just said um but i just wanted to say hey and we are headed to the doctor and we will See you in a minute.
news. Uh, well, we've been home for a while, but good news. Uh, they tested him for, feels like everything, and he was negative. Thank God. So it's just a virus. I have to manage it with him. Uh, and he's already even more playful right now. I think it's just a Tylenol, but hopefully that's him actually getting better. And I will go in there and show y'all him in a second. Uh, yeah, see y'all in a minute. Before I do that, I got to go to the store. And I wasn't going to change shirts, didn't intend on it, but Kai got me. I don't know if y'all can see. Yeah, you can see it. That uh, big wet spot. I think that's mucus. Uh, so, but <laughs> part of the comes with territory when you're a dad. So, anyway, change shirts and get out of here. That's a Kai pie. Hey, Yo, Colin is literally beating me up right now. You better stop it. That's a Kai pie. So I've perked up just a little bit. Hey, Bubba. Can you say hi? <laughs> stop hitting me. <laughs> Bless you. All right. Say, see you in a minute. You say bye bye? You say bye bye, pumpkins. Okay, y'all. Um, not gonna lie, it's been a rough few days. Um, I don't know if I said this on the vlog or not, but um, I am grateful that I'm not. I've not panicked like I normally would when my children get sick. I've been like anxious and like worried about them, but not like to the point where like I'm freaking out and wanting to go to the emergency room every time they cough. Um, however, it has been rough. You can see it in my face. We've not gotten much sleep. And it's not because the baby is like sleepless, like sleepy. I'm not sorry, sleepless. But um, he has, he does wake up because he's coughing. And so he'll wake up um, and he gets frustrated because he's trying to go back to sleep, but he keeps coughing. And so we're having to console him and then do what we can to get him feeling enough better enough to go back to sleep um and that requires a lot so it's just been a lot it's been a lot going on and if i'm honest like i'm just not okay and just emotional i'm just emotional i got a lot going on and you know life doesn't slow down for us it doesn't slow down. I think we have pockets and moments where it's like, okay, I can breathe for two seconds. But like, life keeps going. Our responsibilities don't change. Our, you know, obligations, the things that we have going on, the things that we're committed to, those things don't change. And so finding balance of, okay, am I going to still remain committed to this even though life is going, going crazy right now? Am I still going to stay committed to what I said I was going to do? Am I going to hold up to these obligations? And sometimes you power through it. And sometimes you have to be honest with yourself and say, I can't do it. I, I know I said I could, but I can't. Um, and then there are other things that are going on outside of just this one I'm talking about that I have no control over um, with other individuals that I'm interacting with. Um, and I'm trying to remain saved. Um, I'm trying to remain, I won't say remain saved because my salvation, God, is, he already saved me, right? But I'm trying to remain as a godly woman. Um, because although y'all see me on here and I try to represent Christ the best way I can, I still can go there with people. Um, and I still have my moments. I'm not perfect. You know what I'm saying? I still cuss when I get upset, <laughs> um, I got to a point where I wasn't cussing at all, but I have moments. I get If I get angry enough, I can drop some words on you real quick. So that's just me completely transparent. Um, we all have our thing. Um, and so you get me mad enough, you gonna, you're not gonna recognize the sweet Tam that you all know and love. So I, um, I'm at the point where I'm ready to go off on somebody and I'm trying to get them, trying to stay calm. And Holy Spirit, I'm telling y'all, Holy Spirit, he's amazing. Like, 
he really keeps me grounded and he really saves a lot of people from my wrath um, I have to see people as God's children and I wouldn't want nobody talking to my child any kind of way so I gotta think about it that way because that's God's child and I gotta respect God's child that's how I keep myself level-headed um, because in the past, I wasn't always able to remain patient and level-headed in situations where I'm deliberately being done wrong. Um, so, anyway, I'm just venting to y'all. Um, I never told y'all what I was doing, but um, I originally, when I had a day to myself, um, which was this past Monday, I went out to do some stuff. I wanted to, I told y'all I wanted to go get my nails and my toes done. Um just because my feet are so crispy um you couldn't tell the difference between those and a crispy piece of fried chicken they crispy okay my feet are very crispy um and it's just time for me to get a fill in and so i'm trying to be consistent with that um and so um like i said i've been cooped up in the house um with the babies and um, as much as I love being in a house with my kids, like I can do that for weeks. I still have, I need mommy time. Like I need my time. Um, um, and Cody had to go into the office today. So when he came home, it was just a lot going on when he came home. I literally haven't eaten today. This is the first thing I could grab on my way because uh, my nail tech told me I could go ahead and come now. And so I was trying to hurry up and get to him and I was like I don't have time to stop and get anything to eat but I literally haven't had anything to eat and I didn't have anything prepared and literally this was the last donut in the box so I just grabbed it and I got some saltine crackers and a body armor drink so it's a lot it's a lot of moving pieces right now but I'm grateful to my husband for giving me that space to just get out of the house for a minute clear my mind and just have some self-care to myself so hopefully that'll help me feel a little bit better and I'm able to push through the rest of the day and the week so anyway um yeah I love y'all and I will talk to y'all in a little bit okay y'all so I'm on my phone recording right now because I didn't bring the camera with me. I did get my nails and my feet done. It took way longer than I planned. Um, I called and I guess when I called, they weren't as busy, but when I got there, it picked up. And so just took a little bit longer. Um, I'm aggravated, y'all. I feel like when it rains, it pours. Um, our car started running hot. And Cody figured out, okay, we needed some more coolant. So he put more coolant in there. But there's some other issue he needs to fix as well. It started running hot on me on the way home. And Cody and I both were panicking because I'm trying to drive. And he wanted me to show him the hand. And the car was just like revving, like doing this weird thing. And it was scary because like I'm in control of the wheel. But I'm like, also, is this car going to blow up on me? Like, what are we doing? Um... So anyway, um, he's going to come back out and figure it out. I still have not really eaten today because the plan was to go get food after this. But when that started happening, I had to just come straight home and was about to pull over to the side of the road and get someone to pick me up. But then the um, the gate, the temperature gauge started going down a little bit. And so I just we just chanced it. I wasn't far from home. I just came straight home. But um I don't know what God is doing, but our patience and our trust and our faith in him is being tested for sure. Um, we're dealing with sick babies, car issues. And I feel like ever since we had our first initial stuff with the car, I just feel like it's just been going like spiral with that, like one thing after another with this car. And I know our van is very old. Um, and it's time for a new car, but we're not ready to purchase one yet. Like, we want a certain vehicle that's going to do what we need it to do for our family. And we have a certain budget we want to stay within. 
And these, everything, inflation is just crazy right now. Like, I just can't see myself paying $700 a month for a car. No, that's a lot of money. Um, and it's not even for like a, like a luxury car or nothing. That's $700. And I know a lot of people are like, oh yeah, that's, I'm like, no, I'm not paying that. But for us to get what we want and um, the size of vehicle we need. Anyway, y'all, I'm just ranting. I'm trying to get myself together. I'm still very much hungry. I'm very aggravated. And I still have somewhere to be this evening. So I'm frustrated. But anyway, um, yeah. Okay. Anyway, y'all. Uh, we just ordered lunch. I don't know if I told y'all. I may have. That our car is out of commission. Um, it's running hot. And we cannot drive it. And so we've got to get it towed to the dealership. Or to the local car automotive shop. Um, but the boys also have doctor's appointments today. Carson. Carson. Kylan has his four month checkup. As well as Kyle, uh Now I'm going to mix them up. As well as Carson has to have a checkup because his cough has not left and in order for them to prescribe him anything for it he has to be seen so we're taking both of them in at 2 45 cody's been in meetings literally all day so he just ordered doordash for us to eat lunch so i'm gonna go eat take a shower and start getting the boys ready because we have to get uber to go to the doctor's appointment Y'all, and I tell y'all this has been a crazy week and it's funny because i was just talking about this Pretty much at the beginning of this month, end of last month, about how peace is not when things are calm and, oh, you know, it's birds chirping and everything's so quiet and serene. No, peace is when eh, when the storms of life are raging, when all hell is breaking loose, when you've been beaten upside the head and you can remain in a posture to say, God, you're in control. And so I've, having, I've been having to stay in that mindset and I've been fighting the part of me that wants to panic and freak out and cry. And I did. I bust out crying today because I was just like, Lord, this is so much. This is too much. I can't take it anymore. And so he's working in the background. He sent some encouraging words via my best friend. He, um, my mom has been trying to encourage me. Um, it's just, it's, it's been a lot. So I've been trying to push forward and trying to be there for Cody because he's stressed too. And as, you know, father, husband, provider, like, you know, this is heavier even on him than it is me. And so just trying to work as a family unit to, to push through this time. Um, the boys can feel it. They can sense it. Um, Carson has done nothing but sleep. He's been sleeping, sleeping, sleeping. So his body is fighting this. Thankfully, it's not anything that it's serious, but it's whatever it is, it has literally gotten them down. Like the last time Colin got sick, y'all saw he was sick for like two days and he was back to himself. He's been sick since Friday and it is, what's today? Lord, what is today? Today's Thursday. So almost a week now, my baby has not been himself and I'm not okay. I'm not okay because he's four months. He's a baby. He loves to eat. And when my baby's refusing to eat, I feel some type of way. Because I need my baby. I'm going to have mama eat. I want you to eat because I know you need something in your system. I need You need energy. You know, you need food. So, I'm about to go eat my lunch. Um, and then, yeah. Baby boy's still on this pillow, so. Anyway, all right. I love y'all. Um, I would take y'all to see Cody, but he's literally at work right now um, in meetings that obviously I can't show on camera. So, all right, y'all.
we still haven't filled y'all in on what's going on, so we will, but here it is. I'll fill y'all in in a little bit. Okay, y'all, so we finally have made it home. Baby boy's got his treatment. He's even holding it himself, see? <laughs> um, so, just to give y'all an update, um, yesterday was crazy. Um, you got it, Poo-Poo? <laughs> so, um, yesterday, we, um, long story short, our car started running hot the night before, and the boys were getting sicker. They scheduled, Car Car Kylan had his four month checkup anyway. They scheduled Carson to come in because Carson had a cough and they needed to see him before they could prescribe him um, the albuterol for the breathing treatment. And so with our car running hot, we literally was calling around trying to find rides. We couldn't, uh, we didn't know what we was gonna do. Um, hmm. Oh, it's fine. So, we ended up um, having to get an Uber for our entire family. And the first experience, the first driver was amazing. He pulled up in this really nice Tesla. It was super cool. The boys thought it was a spaceship. It was fun. Very professional. Car was very clean. Excellent service. That second car. Hot mess. The car smelled like cigarettes. The driver didn't even wait for us to, to strap the baby in before he pulled off. Um, had the windows down, air blowing all in our face. And finally, he's like, oh, you can roll the window up if you want to. Mom is here, y'all, by the way. Um, he was like, you can roll the window up if you want to. And in my head, I'm like, why would you have him down anyway? And then he, um, like I said, the kids was coughing the whole time because of the smell. I mean, they already had coughs, and then you got car smell like, he clearly had just finished smoking when we got in the car. Like, and I know it was because I saw the lighter up there. And so, um, he holding on to the cord. That's why you can't get it. Let it go, boy. There we go. So anyway, um, he, um, it was just not good. But in between that, we had to go to the hospital. And let me tell you how good that is. That start, that thing was fixed, poking him in the face the little end of the shoestring yeah. thing. Okay. Okay. So we were gonna have to Uber from the doctor's office to the hospital. But the office manager, first of all, the doctor was like, oh my gosh, I didn't know y'all were doing that. Like, she felt terrible. She just happened to mention it. The office manager's like, we'll take them. So his family, they literally, he got the boys and Cody in the car and drove them and his wife drove me with their whole family to the hospital. And so when we got there, they did a chest x-ray to make sure he didn't have pneumonia. Thankfully he did not have pneumonia, but he does have an ear infection and bronchiolitis, which is basically the baby version of bronchitis. Um, and so he had his checkup today and that's where I was today when y'all saw me. And he's breathing a little bit better. Obviously his ears are not, he just got diagnosed yesterday, only did one dose of medicine, antibiotics. So I just gave him a second dose not too long ago. But um, he is doing better. He slept a little better, not coughing as much. And the cough is not as wet as it was. So it's helping, but um, yeah, he's still not feeling good. He's probably at about 50% there, where before he was like 30% there, he was not feeling good. So, um, like I told y'all, it's been a week from hell, but God is still here in the midst of it. And um, so, yeah, my parents came and I literally cried. My mom told me they were coming because it's been stressful. And, you know, when you go through, sometimes you just want your mama. Um, so my dad's going to help Cody look at the car and see what's going on with the car just to try to save some money. If we don't have to take it to the shop, that would be great. And then... Um, we're going to get a rental car until we figure out what's going on with the car. So thank God for parents. Thank God for my parents. 
I know that I'm blessed because not all parents are even capable or willing to do what my parents do for me and Cody. So we're blessed. We're grateful. And of course, seeing their grandkids is a plus. So you have to see your grandbabies. <laughs> so anyway, we love y'all. And I don't know where the blog is going to end up, but I'm sure we'll get back on here before the day is over with. Until next time. Kylan, that stinks. <laughs> oh, he passed gas at the doctor's office. Oh, and the nurse was like, what formula is he on? And I said, um, breast milk. She said, oh, yeah, I forgot you breastfeeding. She said, and then he passed. I said, oh, that stinks. She said, oh, that's why I asked you, because it's one formula that make the babies. I said, no, he just stank. <laughs> His gas is horrendous. And then he, he smells so bad, you just know for sure it's some poop in a diaper. Nothing but air. All right, y'all. Love y'all. See y'all in a little bit.